it's the period for us to be up here. Um, yay for small business! Woo! Woo! And yay for women in energy efficiency in small business. Woo! your jobs are easy, far from it, um, but there are some things that you don't have to worry about, like getting paid and <laughs> making sure you have enough money to pay your 16 staff every fortnight. Um, so I'm incredibly proud of what me and my team achieve, and I, but I do have to remind myself at times that I don't have a public education budget or a research budget and that I'm no longer a um, research scientist or a, a public servant. But it's sort of my side hustle. It's not at all lucrative, but I do find it satisfying. Um, so I, it is genuinely a huge buzz to be acknowledged in front of an audience like this. So thank you. But I am going to tell you a bit more. Um, where to begin? I'm not going to miss an opportunity like this. I'm actually going to start with a quick lesson in the form of a list. Just what you want at a garden. <laughs> and um, I know most of you have had a few drinks by now, and I'll try and go at one and a half speed. Um, but I want you to commit this uh, short list to your memory. But first, I want to start with a question, and I know I can rely on Holly to give you a firm answer. Do you want to help massively reduce Australian residential energy use? Mm. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Improve the climate resilience of our housing stock? Yes! Yeah. And have a profound impact on the comfort and health of Australian households. <laughs> and do you want to do that cost of, as cost effectively as possible? No brainer. Okay, well, in that case, here's the list for you. One, draft seal. It's not sexy for everybody. Draft seal. <laughs> Two, insulate. Again, not sexy. You know you've got to do it. Three, get off gas. Um, now I do have a little uh, list of footnotes as well because I know some of you get a bit funny about some of these things. So footnote A is solar panels won't improve your health. You're crazy to add PV without doing one, two, three. Okay? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Window dressings and external shading come first. I love PV, I love double glazing, but let's get things in the right order. Point C, air leakage and ventilation are different things. And if you know that, you can manage condensation. Don't stress, everybody. So, back to the top, repeat after me. One, draft seal. Draft seal. Draft seal. Two, insulate. Insulate. Three, get off gas. Get off gas. Get off gas. But there is more, that's not it. Um, I, I think with hindsight, I've been um, practicing building physics my entire life or learning about it. I've actually lived in 27 different homes now. I added this up just last week. Nine as a kid, 18 as an adult, 13 as a tenant, and 14 as part of a mortgage family. I'm not a property baron. Um, one unit, one flat, four apartments, two boarding houses, one shack, and the rest houses. Three new, the others built across a range, a broad range from 1930s right through to one built in 2017. In the city, in the suburbs, and in rural settings. Within Australia, in southern Tasmania, um, in Perth and Albany, WA, and more recently Canberra, but also overseas in Vancouver, Canada, and Los Banos in the Philippines. So they've all helped me really develop a strong appreciation for the impact that design and construction can have on people's comfort, health and quality of life. Because some of those homes were fantastic, but many of them were shockers. So I've been there and, um, in fact, I thought I'd better add one of these shocking examples. When I, my first house in Canberra, I, I had my first baby in 1998 in July, and that winter, as I was breastfeeding that baby, in the middle of the night, we had a complete sheet of ice on the inside of the bedroom window. So I've done cold, I have suffered, and I've lived in other camper rentals as well. Now, when I went to uni, I chose between architecture, engineering, and science, and I decided to do the broadest degree possible, and eventually majored in biochemistry and molecular biology. 
but I'm a generalist at heart and I did the phys physics and chemistry and maths as well. After dabbling in research at ANU and CSIRO with the CRC, I decided the lab wasn't for me and I did a master's in science communication. And that led to all sorts of interesting jobs with um, CSIRO education programs, Questacon and a variety of different research organisations. But my career took a significant change in 2008. At the time, I was working in the innovation policy section um, in the Federal Department of, I think it was called Industry Innovation Science and Research at that time, right? yeah. I um, had returned to live in Canberra after six years away interstate and overseas, and I'd chosen a house with excellent orientation because I'd lived in poorly oriented houses in Canberra before, and I thought, I'm not going to make that mistake. We moved into the house, and it was completely miserable. I had never, well, I had been as cold, but it was a miserable house. I coughed and I wheezed through the worst, first winter and discovered mold in the back of cupboards, and I thought, what the heck have I done? And at the same time, I started watching the ABC TV show called Carbon Cops. I don't know if any of you remember that TV show back in 2008. Um, it, it was made in Melbourne and a friend of mine, Lish Fayer, who's an ABC radio journalist now, was presenting that. And she used a blower door in one of the episodes and did an air leakage test. And I remember sitting there and my brain nearly exploded inside my head. But, oh my God, I knew this, this house I was currently in had insulation problems. But holy heck, that's what I need. I need an air leakage test. I bet this house leaks like a sieve. So the next day, I tried to line one up and quickly discovered that the blower door used in that TV show was the only blower door being used in the residential industry at the time. And that made me think, holy dooly, there's a gap in the industry that needs plugging. Pardon the pun. I like really like the pun. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys should you watch it too. Good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that commitment. Uh, looking around and researching further, um, led me to firmly believe that there was huge untapped potential in the Australian housing stock and that we could massively reduce energy use and improve comfort and health by simply addressing air leakage and poor insulation and improving designing for site and climate. Um, I actually resigned from my job, which at the time was all about encouraging innovation in industry and perhaps that's what gave me the courage to do that. But I was so convinced about this need for residential retrofitting and confident that we had the right government to invest in energy efficiency. Um, I didn't know that that was going to change significantly, of course, but we're back in the, back in the good days. So I trained in that health modelling, I trained in Navies and Green Star and life cycle analysis. I went to, went to New Zealand and the US and I bought a blower door and a thermal camera and I learned how to use them. I also trained as a green loans assessor back in the early days with the new program. And how did that work out, too? Oh, really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I also, around that time, wrote some letters to Minister Garrett, who's performed on this stage, I hear, um, about my concerns about the quality of insulation installs under the scheme that we don't talk about. So it wasn't all rosy, that's for sure, but I got intense training on a wide variety of tools. And back then I actually climbed in roofs and up ladders and got down on my hands and knees. I had the corking gun. I was actually testing, diagnosing and retrofitting. So I, I really, um, I don't do that anymore. I've actually had three hip replacements, which is why it's so impressive I got up those stairs, thank you everybody, in a dress, which I don't normally wear. Um, anyway, uh, the great thing about a blower door and a thermal camera is that um, Keeping in mind, I come from a science communication background. I could see the huge potential for these diagnostic tools as great communication tools. So it was like one great big hands-on science show. You take residents or builders or architects into a house and do a blower door test, and they can't deny what they can see and feel. So it's really, really powerful in that way. Um, my career then took another interesting turn in 2011, just three years later. I became the co-director um, of an architecture plus construction plus science business with an architect and builder as business partners. And demand for our unique business model grew very rapidly and I was still doing retrofit, but the glamour of the architecture, as often happens, sort of overshadowed um, that 
less sexy work in the background and I was so busy running the business and learning about architecture and construction that um, it sort of flew under the radar for a while. 2015, I stopped doing construction, just the architecture and science and, and really swung back to the retrofit. So I'm really pleased to say that um, my team of 16 is now five on the science side and 11 on the architecture team. And most of our architecture work is actually now renovation work. Um, and we don't even promote it, the science side of the business, but we do 100 or over 100 small scale consultancies um, to help people with very small budgets to improve their houses each year. So I don't really need to tell you that guys this, but I'm going to. Retrofitting Australian houses will transform people's lives and massively reduce our energy use and health costs. <laughs> it delivers enormous bang for buck if done in the right order. We know what to do. The challenge is communicating it to the various audiences and developing the workforce to implement the retrofit measures. I'll talk about that more tomorrow in my presentation. But enough of my hot air, um, not always. I want to thank the EEC team, and in particular my rock star friend, Rob Murray Leach, who I'm, I'll probably cry if I say more, so I'll stop there. But finally, Rob, repeat after me. One, draft field. Two, into it. Three, get off the <laughs>